and we are back thanks for clicking on the link welcome to good energy enjoy the content and everyone have a blessed day And we are back. Welcome to Good Energy, guys. We have a treat for you tonight. You will want to watch this entire video. But let's get back to the Roland Garros. We have a preview and prediction video for you today. You do want to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. But first, today's action, let's do a quick recap. Elise Cornet taking out Jelena Ostapenko. That match was full of drama. Ostapenko arguing all day. I told you Cornet would pull that off and definitely win at least a set. Uh, both of those were huge, huge lines, underdogs, and enjoy, guys. I hope you took that. Danielle Collins versus Shelby Rogers. That's a match I thought Danielle Collins would win, but she lost. Uh, Shelby Rogers did. She got it done, and congratulations to Shelby Rogers, but I do not see her getting past next round. Sabalenka, straight set victory. I told you to take that. That was a very good price. Iga Swiatek, straight set victory. I told you to take that as well. Quinnen and Halep. I said that match would go over, and it certainly did, but I did think Halep would win. Uh, Halep lost. Um, Zhang does have a lot of clay experience, and the reality is it showed today. Georgi and Putin Seva. I said that would go over 21. That was a push. It hit 21 on the dot. And Caroline Garcia, Madison Keys. I said that would go over and Keys would win. Both of those hit for you. And um, Smedlova, I thought she would actually win. So that was a loss. Rabinka, I did say Rabinka would win that in straight sets. Good price. That was a win. And. Um, Kataskina. I said that would be a straight set victory. That was a good price. That was a win. Kuna Matova was one of the locks. That won. Begu was a lock. That won. Pegula and over. That was a lock. Those won. Um, Paula Badosa. Over. That was a lock. And I thought Pliskova would win, but she did not. That was a loss. Guys, 90% of the picks, I gave you one. In terms of the top 15 players, not many are left. Uh, we have Iga, Paula Badosa, Azarenka, Bensik, and Pagula. However, the 15 through 31st seeds, uh, or 16 through 31st seeds rather, these ladies are playing tremendous tennis. Kataskina, Fernandez, Golf, Kerber, Teichman, Zaydensek, Samsonova, Mertens, Kunamatova, Georgi, Anasimova. These ladies are looking very good. And we're going to see what the next round has in store. I have some great picks coming up for you. But let's get right into it. Uh, the first pick of the day, Daria Seville versus Trevisian. Uh, these, these two ladies are both playing good tennis. Trevisian is playing much, much better tennis. And um, if you take a look at how she's done so far, uh, she's doing very well against very tough competition. And she's putting up, she's only putting up about one ace per game, um, but she's saving her break points at a pretty decent affair considering the competition she's faced. She's saving 59% of her break points. She is converting on 56% of her break points. And I'm very impressed with that as well. Daria Seville, on the other hand, Daria is averaging about two aces per game. Uh, she's saving 54% of her break points, and she's converting on only 36% of her break points. If this match comes down to who is clutch, then Daria might be in trouble in this match. Uh, in terms of clay experience, we know Trevisian is a very experienced clay player. She's got 228 wins on clay. And again, she's playing very well. Her last 10 matches, she's won eight of them. Uh, amazing streak so far. Uh, Dara Seville on clay, she's not that experienced on clay. 67 wins on clay. And if you take a look at her last 10 matches, uh, she's only won five of them. She split them. This is a match that 
to be honest with you, it's, it's a tough one to pick, but I think uh, Trevesian will get the win there. Take Trevesian to win. Even though Daria is probably a little more experienced overall, Trevesian money line is the winner there. Uh, Sashnovich and Angelique Kerber. Uh, this is a match there that, to be honest with you, I'm very interested in. Uh, Sashnovich is, uh, well, let's start with Kerber first. Kerber, she's only averaging one ace per game. In terms of her break point saves, she's saving 60% of her break points. And trust me, that's a lot considering how she's been playing lately. Uh, she's converting 44% of her opportunities to break opponents. Uh, Sashnovich, um, she's averaging about just under three aces per game. Uh, she's saving 56% of her break points and she's converting 47% of her break point opportunities for her opponents. Uh, Kerber's just not doing much with her serve. Uh, like I said, only averaging about one ace per game. Uh, in terms of clay season, Kerber 138 wins lifetime, 91 losses. And in terms of Sasnovich, 103 wins, 74 losses. Both ladies do not prefer playing on clay. But taking a look at recent form, we know Kerber just won the Strasbourg Championship. Congratulations to her. Uh, Kerber has won seven of her last ten matches. Sasnovich heating up. Also um, great in terms of her last ten. Sasnovich won eight of her last ten matches. This is a match that even though Kerber owned the head had two to love winning um, the meeting this year in Australia as well. This is a match that I think Sasnovich is going to win. I think I think Kerber, she's a little older. Her body's got to be fatigued and tired. I'm picking Sasnovich to win this match. You saw her route Emma Raducanu, a much younger physical player. Kerber strong, but Sasnovich too versatile. Sasnovich money line. That's going to be a lock of the day for me. Uh, let's move on to who do we have next? What does that say? Belinda Bensick, Layla Fernandez. Uh, let's let's go right into it. Belinda Bensick, uh, she's averaging just under four aces per game. Pretty good serve. Yes, decent serve. You have to like that. Uh, she's saving 63% of her break points. She's converting 45% of her opportunities to break opponents. Layla doesn't have the best serve. Uh, she's not a serve and volley player. That's one of her weaknesses. If you follow the channel, you know I like players that serve and volley. I think it's more technical. It's more rhythm. It's timing. It's playing chess. Uh, Layla averages about two aces per game. Uh, she's saving 61% of her break points. So that fight spirit that's in her, it's clearly evident. She does not go out without a fight. She's converting only 34% of her break um, Opportunities that I do not like that is very very low in terms of clay season Blenda Bensick has 78 wins lifetime on clay 42 losses uh, Layla Fernandez is not not experienced on clay I, It, it kind of is what it is Belinda Bensick not that experienced either But Layla's only got 36 wins on clay 27 losses So she's losing just about every other match on clay that she plays uh, Taking a look at form Um Belinda Bensick winning eight of her last ten matches. Layla Fernandez winning six of her last ten matches. Uh, this is a match here where Layla does own the head-to-head, -head and um, that again, this they played this year. Um, I'm sorry, they played um, in 2020. In terms of this match here, um, and, and that was at the the Fed Cup, so you know it, it is what it is. You kind of take away from that what you can. Um, this is a match. This is a tough match. Uh, Belinda Bensick is the two to one favorite, but I like Layla Fernandez to win at least a set. And the reality is, I'm not going to pick against Layla Fernandez. I think she's more fit. She's athletic. I think she's playing good, and she's playing with a higher power and higher cause. Take Layla Fernandez to win at least one set. Uh, who do we have next year? Uh, let's see. Amanda Anasimova, and she's going to be taking on Caroline Muchova. These two ladies have never played each other. However, you have to you have to notice Amanda Anasimova. She has arrived, and she is one of the top young stars in the tennis world here. Uh, Amanda, she's averaging just under five aces per game. She's got a very nice serve. She's winning 71% of her service games. 39% of her return games. Those are statistics that are very, very good. 
uh, she's saving 55% of her break points. She is converting 45% of her break point opportunities. Those are some really, really good numbers, and you cannot ignore those numbers. Uh, in terms of her opponent, uh, Mochova, she's back from injury. She's playing very good tennis. She's averaging just under three aces per game. However, she's winning 75% of her service games, 20% of her return games. She's saving 60% of her break points and converting 38% of her break point opportunities. Uh, again, like I said, these two ladies have never played each other before. Uh, in terms of Clay, Amanda and Asimova, she's an American. You know, Americans are not big on Clay. 47 wins on Clay for Amanda. In terms of Munchova, uh, she's got a little bit more experience on Clay. About three times the experience as Amanda on Clay. She's got 115 wins on Clay. In terms of form, Amanda and Asimova, she's won eight of her last 10 matches. Munchova has, um, she split her last 10, winning five and five. Amanda's got the type of power that can literally disrupt Muchova's game. Uh, if Muchova wants any chance in winning this uh, this match here, she's going to have to use her net skills, kind of like she did with Zachary. Uh, she's, she's got the power to isolate anything Amanda tries to throw at her. You just saw that with Zachary. There's nothing Amanda has that Zachary does not have. Uh, this is a match, however, though, I like how Amanda's playing. And I'm going to go with Amanda and Samova on the money line. I'm pretty confident in this pick as well. And the next pick, uh, who do we have there? Vivara Gracheva versus Elise Martins. And Vivara, she's averaging about one ace per game. She's only winning 50% of her service games and 30% of her return games. Those are not good numbers. I'm not sure how she's made it here so far, but she's playing on momentum. The reality it's just momentum she's saving 56 percent of her break points and converting 52 percent of her opportunities at least mertens averages uh three aces per game she's winning 67 percent of her service games 37 percent of her return games and she's saving 48 percent of her break points which is a little low on her on her part and uh, she's also converting 48% of her break points. In terms of the clay season, uh, Grishiva, 118 wins on clay, 50 losses. Uh, at least more 10. She's definitely the better hard player. 90 wins on clay, 56 losses. Just want to take a look at their last 10. Grishiva, she's uh, she's won 7 of her last 10 matches. And uh, at least more 10. I split 5 of her last 10. I've, if you follow the channel, I told you, look, I don't like how at least more has looked. I think the match against Buzkova... Um, would have really gave you insight as, as to how her form is. We didn't really get to see that. I hope Busco was okay. But the reality here is um, this is a match that Grachiva can win. But I'm going to go with Elise Mertens on the experience. Elise Mertens, uh, top 25, 20 player. Uh, she plays the better competition more consistently. Um, good win over Tom Janovic, but if uh, if uh, Asia can win a set over Kachiva, then at least Mertens can win too. At least Mertens money line. That's gonna be that's gonna be the pick there. Enjoy. This next match, get your popcorn, ladies and gentlemen. Coco Golf versus Kia Kanepi. These two have played, uh, and they played earlier this year. And Coco Golf owns a head-to-head -head one love. And Coco Golf, she's averaging just under five aces per game. Her serve is getting much better. She's reducing her double faults, and she's youthful. Uh, she's winning 71% of her service games, 34% of her return games. She's converting on her breakpoint opportunities at 42%. She's saving 48% of her breakpoints. That's where she just, she needs to get a little better. That should be definitely over 50, 55, 60% if she wants to compete against the top 10 regularly uh kia kanepi good good serve we all know that kia kanepi is averaging just under four aces per game she's winning 71 percent of her service games 36 percent of her return games she saves 53 percent of her break points and converts at 42 percent of her break points we all know coco golf she's a young player she doesn't have much clay experience kia kanepi has over 200 wins on clay coco golf is only has 36 but if you watch Emma Raducanu's interview today after her loss um, against Sasnovich, she said, because we know Emma Raducanu has zero clay experience uh, coming into 2022. And she said she's learned a lot during this short clay run that she can play a hard game on clay. She just has to time her shots, 
she has to be more patient and she has to know when to take risks. Uh, in terms of form here, these ladies, Coco Golf is active. We know she plays against the best. She enrolls in the best tournaments all the time. She's won six of her last 10. Kia Kanepi has won eight of her last 10. Okay, Kia Kanepi's got some good wins. Haddad Mia, Muguruza, Vekic, uh, Frutova, she beat actually twice. So she has been playing the younger opponents. Uh, in terms of Coco Golf, her loss is Sakri, Halo, Kataskina, Swiatek, the best ladies on tour. This is a match that I'm confident Coco Golf is going to win. Kia Kanepi's got almost five times the experience on clay. However, Coco Golf is, is handing out donuts, bagels, and she is going to be all over the court against Kia Kanepi. Once she adjusts to her power, I see probably the first seven or eight games will be tight. Uh, Kia Kanepi might even hit her off the court in some of these exchanges but once Coco Golf mixes in her drop shots her exchanges and starts delivering her own backhand Kia Kanepi's not going to have the mobile ability being what third I think she's like maybe 34 35 years old she's not going to have the youth to hang with Coco Golf in this match so I'm going to take Coco Golf on the money line and I'm pretty darn confident Coco Golf is going to be a Kia Kanepi. Coco Golf has her draws wide open, and she has a chance to meet Iga in the finals for history. Watch out. This next match is going to be simply put fireworks. Victoria Azarenka versus Jill Teichman. Azarenka owns that head, head, and she actually beat Jill Teichman pretty bad. It's pretty bad this year. Uh, in terms of Azarenka, she's, she's averaging three aces per game. Uh, she's winning 68% of her service games, 39% of her return games. She's saving about 59% of her break points, which is good. Uh, you know, just scratch that match against Amanda Anisimova, and, and those numbers are probably a lot higher. She converted, she converts 48% of her breakpoint opportunities on opponents. Jill Teichman, again, about three aces per game, 69% of her service game, she wins. 36% of her return game, she wins. She saves 59% of her break points, and she converts at a clip of about 43% of her break points. In terms of the last 10, Azarenka has not looked good in her last 10. If you follow the channel, I've made this loud and clear. Uh, despite she's won seven of her last 10 matches, and of course, that's with a couple wins here in this tournament here. Jill Teichman's won eight of her last 10 matches. We all know in terms of clay experience, Jill Teichman's a good clay player. Uh, we know that. Jill Teichman's got 160 wins on clay. And Azarenka, even though being a veteran, she's only got 138 wins on clay. Jill Teichman prefers clay. And despite Azarenka dismantling Jill Teichman earlier this year at the Australian Open, 6-1, 6-2, this is a match that I think Teichman's going to win. I don't like how Azarenka's looked the last couple months against the younger uh, athletes. She did beat Petkovic and Anna Bogdan. Pretty easy draw, but Swiatek just hit her off the court. Um, I don't like how she looked against Amanda Anisimova. I don't like how she looked against Frutova, the younger opponent. You know, there was times where she said she couldn't even see the ball. I like Teichman to win this match. Uh, I think it will be two tight sets, but I do like Teichman on the money line. And I'm very, very confident in, in that pick with Teichman beating Victoria Azarenka as an underdog. Guys, if you have listened so far, please hit the like button. Please comment below what are your thoughts on some of the picks I've given out. If, if you follow the channel, you know 80% of the, the free picks I give out here hit. You can donate to the PayPal, message me. I can give you a lock if you need a lock. Um, but the reality here is we save the best for last. Okay, This is a match that, um, quite frankly, I'm going to watch. I'll be watching in a few hours with my popcorn. And... You know what? Let's let's get right into it. Uh, Sloane Stevens. Sloane Stevens is she's not an ace player anymore. She's not even averaging one ace per game. Um, she has essentially just she switched up her style. You know, a lot of her huge championships, especially the USA Open run. Uh, if you remember that semifinal match against Venus Williams, she used her athletic ability to win that. The Miami Open, where she defeated Azarenka. 
all athletic ability. Charleston Clay Championship, all athletic ability. Uh, at this stage in her career, it's not about athletic. It's about being a disciplined baseliner and being patient. Uh, she's winning 59% of her service games, 33% of her return games. She's saving 55% of her break points and converting 44 percent of her opportunities to break opponents she's playing another person diane parry who is just come out of the blue the hometown woman bonjo komodele vu we saw her take out barbara kajikova and then we saw her take out camilla osario two good opponents now kajikova was she in her top form no but she's still kajikova she's been practicing preparing to defend her championship so she's still a top 10 player. That's a great win. Camilo Osario, young, in shape, very fit. Diane Perry is, she's been putting on some amazing highlights these last couple days. Uh, she's winning 59% of her service games. She's only winning 7% of her return games. Not a lot. And considering she has not had a good ITF run this year she has a losing record on the itf tour and the reality here is she had a good 2021 she's got five titles on the itf winning four of them last year but the reality here is the start of this year has been abhorrent diane Parry looks horrible except with her run so far in this tournament she's saving 65 percent of her break points and converting only 20 percent if she's going to beat sloan stevens she's going to have to break her one out of five opportunities is not going to work because Sloan might not even give her five opportunities. Sloan Stevens, if you follow the channel, I've mentioned time and time again, there's no other slam champion that gets disrespected like Sloan Stevens. And the reality is it doesn't make sense. Sloan Stevens has 111 wins on clay. We know she has a clay championship at the Charleston Open, South Carolina. So she doesn't mind playing on clay regardless of what you might think. And Diane Perry, 99 wins on clay. She is, she's, she prefers clay. The reality is in her young career, she prefers to play on clay, which is why she's been able to upset some of these people. Sloane Stevens has only won four of her last six matches, including the two here against Serge Stu and Nine Meter. In terms of Parry, Parry has won only five of her last 10, with the two biggest being Camilla Osario and Barbara Kajikova. This is a match here that Sloan should win. Uh, Sloan is the favorite. She's the more experienced player. And quite frankly, she's better than Parry. And the disrespect Sloan Stevens gets on tour, she gets the, the worst draws. I don't know why. Uh, it seems like every first round she's facing Madison Keys or one of her friends. It's ridiculous. Or Serena Williams or Coco Golf. Um, but. But, 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 the reality here is Diane Perry. If you watched the U.S. Open last year, you saw this woman named Emma Ranikanyu come out of nowhere and win the title. Uh, you know how these majors are. You have these players that get hot at the right time. Jelena Asapenko, 2017, and then they go on, and then they shock the world. Sloane Stevens should win this match, simply put. However... In the words of Stephen A. Smith, however, Diane Perry is playing very, very good. She's going to have the home crowd behind her, and I do not like Sloan Stevens' movement. Um, she's dropping sets to opponents she shouldn't be dropping. And Diane Perry to win once at least one set is minus 167. The lock of the day is going to be take Diane Perry to win one set. I think she's going to win the first set, actually, but take her to win at least one set. And the reality here is Diane Perry might win this match. That's right. I said it. Diane Perry might send Sloan Stevens packing. She might send her packing. Um, but nonetheless, guys, this has been good energy. Enjoy the free picks. Enjoy the content. Please like, subscribe. If you've listened so far and haven't liked, what is wrong with you guys? Come on. Uh, but that's the lock of the day. Take Diane Perry to win at least one set. Take Coco Golf money line. And uh, I like Sasnovich money line as well. Um, but Diane Perry is the official lock of the day to win at least one set. And Coco Golf is the other lock of the day to beat Kia Kanepi. 
Uh, thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, I appreciate the support. This has been Good Energy. Enjoy tennis. Join me. Join me in the comment section for some of the live matches uh, underway and in progress as I post them. Please comment and let me know who you think is going to win. Have a good day, guys, and enjoy the tennis. Thank you.